Welcome to our getting started video for PRG uh, 211. Today we're going to be talking about the choral language. Most of you are brand new to programming. And so I wanted to get you started with some of the very basics. This video does not in any way take the place of the ebook that gets into much more detail and does a much better job than I'm going to do. But this is just to get you started. So as you learn on the ebook, uh, programs have really three different types of instructions, inputs, process, and output instructions. We're going to talk about those. The choral language was built specifically to teach beginning programming. And so it's a very um, small set of things that it can do. And it runs on this web page in this simulator where you can type in your code and you can execute it. It provides a place where you can input, provide input and see output. And within your ebook and like exercises, there's a similar set of, it's exactly the same thing as what I'm doing right here from the Coral Language site. By the way, CoralLanguage.org has this simulator. It has the actual language specification that tells you all the stuff about the language. It has a tutorial. And of course, there's tons of information in your book, in the ebook. So we'll get started here. Um, program languages, at least for Coral, has three different types of statements, keywords, white space, and variables that we're really going to talk about here. Let's start with keywords. Keyword is a word that does something special in a language. And an example of that in the Coral language is what, which prints. And so in this section right here, I'm going to be typing the code. You can see the code as code, or you can see it as a flow chart. It won't show me that until I put something down here. So you can see it as a flow chart, or you can, but you can only really change it in the code. Here's where you provide input. Here's where it's going to show you output. You can run your program. Uh, if I click here, enter execution, then I can run my program. And then when I'm done, I have to click exit execution to be able to come in and make changes to it. So put is a keyword. Hello, within double quotes, that's a string literal or a text literal. And then this is important stuff on the end that has to be there. I put my different statements, um, one on each line, like, like this. If I instead do this, it doesn't like that. It has to be here. Um, I can have multiple, I could do it like this, that's okay. So I can have space between them, but I can't have a line that doesn't have spaces in it like this. It has to have spaces between the words. Within your text literal, you can do what you want, but remember that the output, when you start doing the labs, it's gonna expect a very specific um, output. Um, these keywords, have a specific type. So you can't do put in lowercase here and work. And you can't do output in uppercase and have it work. This has to be the right case or else you're going to have problems. OK. Um, the other thing I wanted to talk about is, so yeah, so the syntax is very specific. If I have something wrong with my syntax, like, like this, and I come down here and I hit execution, it's going to tell me, hey, you got something wrong here. It's not going to tell you that your program is going to give you the wrong output or something like that. It's just saying there's something wrong with the coral syntax. And so that's why this has to be right before I can run. Um, so, you know, we could just keep printing this stuff out over and over again, and this isn't going to teach us a ton. We need to start doing some additional things within the language. And one of those has to do with what we call variables. And in Coral, the only kind of variables that we can store are numbers. But a variable, think of it as a post office box. It's a box of a certain size that I can go get my mail. I can open it up, and I can, there's something inside of it. On the other side, the postman puts stuff in there. Well, a variable is like that. I put data into it, and then I can take it out, or I can change it. And it's a specific, a specific type. There are only two types in Coral. There's an integer. An integer is a number that doesn't have a decimal point. And there's a float. A float is a number that does have a decimal point. 
pretty simple. Three things that I can do that I, I, the first thing I have to do with a variable is I have to declare it. I'll show you that here in just a second. The second thing you, you, you need to do is you need to set it. You need to put something in the box. And then the third thing you can do is you can take it out of the box. Okay, or you can, uh, you can take it out, you can change the number and you can put it back. So I'll show you that. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna do a simple program that takes two numbers that um, adds them together and provides them as input or output, sorry. So let's start with, we're doing the, dealing with a variable, we need to declare it. We're gonna have, have some numbers here, number one. So you have to put the type in and then call that post office box what you wanna call it. Number one is what I'm calling this. Could be to, you can call it what you want. Integer, number two, that's for the second number. And then we're gonna do one that stores the actual sum of the numbers. Again, you can call these things what you want, but this has to be right. It has to be just like this with the lowercase i, else it won't work. Now, the first, second thing we said we need to do with the variable is we need to set it. So I'm gonna do the same thing here. I'm gonna say, hey, now let's set, let's put a five in the post office box called number one. Now it's critical that this and this match exactly upper lower case. You can call these things what you want, but they can't have spaces. They can't start with a number. They can't have a special character in them. You know, there's some things like that. Now we're gonna do the same thing here with number two. Okay. Now I've got these two set. Now let's set sum. Now I could do something like this. That could set sum, but since we're dealing with variables here, why don't we do it this way? What this does is it says, set the value of sum equal to, go out and get the value from the mailbox number one and go out and get the variable from the number one mailbox two and add them together, put them in sum, okay? Now, our output statement here, today we've just been typing in these literals here. Well, instead, we can just type the word sum what that does is when it sees this, goes out to the mailbox called sum and puts the number right here. So if we wanted to run this, I'm going to enter execution and I'm going to click run. And you notice these variable names, those boxes change. And here's your post office boxes. And then it printed out the output right here. Okay. Not too shabby. Um, so let's, we, we said that there were three things input, output. Uh, input, process, output. We've talked about output process, but we haven't now talked about input. Let's talk about that. Let's say that the five and the 10 here, rather than me hard coding them, which is what I'm doing in my program, that we have them as input. Now in Coral, it's really simplified. It's not like you'd find in a regular type of programming language. In a regular programming language, maybe the input would come from a keyboard, like the user typing it in. Maybe it would be read in from a file or it would come from a database or something like that as input. But for this, it's just simply right in here. So I got to get out of the execution mode and I'm going to put it like this. I got a space between them. That will Corel know that I've got two numbers here. And I'll rather right here than just hard coding it, I'm going to use a new keyword, get next input. It takes the first one here and then I'm going to do it again right here. And then it grabs this one, okay? So in this case, it's only looking for two numbers because it's only going to ask for two. If I had a bunch of other stuff here, doesn't matter, it's not gonna read any of it in anyway. It's only gonna take the first two because I've only got lines for two. So if I run this, notice these numbers are the same as they were before and the output's the same, okay? So I'm gonna just get rid of these because they're kind of confusing. All right, now what if I don't want it to just say 15, maybe I want it to say um, the sum is, So I still have two output. I've got two of these lines though. Let's run it again, see what happens. There we go, sum is 15. Okay, now notice I have two lines here, but it only print, it printed everything on one line. I could have a hundred of these puts and it would just continue to put them on the same line. If I want it to be on two lines, I have to do something about it. And that's, I have to use this special character or two characters together. It's this, 
that's a slash and an N. Now remember that, make sure you got the right one. This is the slash that's by the enter key, not the other one. And it's a lowercase n. And if I do this, what these two together mean is end of line or new line. So it's basically like hitting enter. Okay. And now we've got the two on there together. So we learned a little bit about how to use Coral, the simulator. We learned about input. We learned about output. We learned about writing statements. And now you should be in a position to um, start coding. So hope this will help you out.